Everything you need is already inside of you. The world would not be what it is without you. When we begin to create change within us, we begin to create change in the world around us. Your journey to becoming your best self as the whole person starts right now. Welcome to the Become Your Best podcast and webinar series. I am Lauren Sweeney, your host and the vice president here at Rise Up For You. Today, we have a very special guest, John Lee Dumas. Today, we're going to talk about all of the different things that entrepreneurs and leaders across the globe are facing. He is the founder and the host of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, also known as E. O-F. With over 100 million listeners of his 3,000 plus episodes, JLD has turned entrepreneurs on fire into a media empire that generates over a million listens every month and seven figures of net annual revenue, which is not easy to do. His first traditionally published book, The Common Path, to Uncommon Success, which we're going to talk about, is the modern day version of Think and Grow Rich. With a revolutionary 17-step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment, John Lee Dumas, welcome to the Rise Up For You podcast. Lauren, I am fired up to be here. I mean, after that video intro, I, I want to go for a run. I mean, that person running down that beach, man, that was inspiring. Right? I love it. So, Tell me, John, if you're listening, you're an entrepreneur, you're a leader, what are you most passionate about? If you could tell people one thing, what does that look like right now? It's just one thing that I'm passionate about. And it's honestly something I've been passionate about for 10 years. And that's freedom. And it's my version of freedom. It's the freedom to wake up every day and do the things that I want to do to take, to take care of my body, to take care of my financial situation to take care of my relationships to take care of just things that I want to do. And I, I love that freedom that I've carved out in my life. And I think I love it even more because I was in the army for eight years and, you know, I, I, I fought for all of your freedoms if you're in the United States, but, uh, you know, I wasn't necessarily feeling very free myself as a soldier in the U S army, you know, it's a great organization, nothing to take away from it, but there's a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, a lot of restrictions that are in there as there should be and need to be. But I know that when I got out, I wanted freedom for the rest of my life. And that's what I strove to create. And it didn't happen overnight, but it did happen over time. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're listening, and I know that you talk with entrepreneurs every day with your brand, how do you, how, where do you, you know, you get stuck at different places. You sometimes you're in the baby steps. You have this vision, this dream, maybe it's even a side hustle. And sometimes you're stuck in like scaling, maybe from hundred K to 200 K, et cetera, et cetera. What do you, what do you, would you say to get unstuck? There's a reason why you're stuck. You're stuck because you're not the best solution to a real problem in this world. Because if you were the best solution to a real problem, the sky is literally the limit because people will beat a path to the door of the best solution to their real problems. And so if you're stuck, that means you're the second best or the 10th best or the 83rd best solution to your problem. And that's just not going to cut it. Mm. Boom chick on that. That sounds great. Fantastic. Because if you can really narrow down, I think that a lot of times entrepreneurs don't have clarity. I'll ask them, what do you do? Well, I sort of X, Y, and Z. Well, who do you help? Well, I can help everybody. So you haven't narrowed it down. How do you support entrepreneurs? And talk to me about the book, Uncommon Success as well. But what, how do you support people in that journey in getting specific so they can be the best in what they do? No, you're right. People are broad. They're vague. And I like to say, when you try to resonate with everybody, you resonate with nobody. I mean, that's a reality of this world. And everybody wants to resonate with everybody. So their you know, potential customer, client, audience base is as big and as wide as possible. And hey, guess what? Maybe your content would hypothetically resonate with everybody. But that, again, makes you the 343rd thousandth best at that specific topic because it's such a broad, vague competitive, saturated market, you need to become the best solution. Because Lauren, in your example, when you ask somebody like, who do they serve? What do they do? 
when you have the best solution to a real problem, that response is so easy because that's what you do. For me, I wanted to launch a podcast. And I said, well, I can't just launch any podcast because there's 8,000 podcasts. Well, what if I do a business podcast? Okay, well, that's better because there's 800 of those. What if I do an interview-based podcast where I'm actually interviewing the world's most successful entrepreneurs? Like, I'm getting pretty niche here. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's seven other of those podcasts back in 2012. Did I want to be the eighth best podcast interviewing entrepreneurs? No. So I said, well, what's within that? a solution that I could be the best of for a real problem. And I identified that every one of those shows was doing one episode per week. So I said to myself, well, what if it's a quantity thing? What if I did two episodes per week? That'd be double. Well, that might not be good enough. What about three? What about four? Well, if I'm going to go four, why not do a daily podcast interviewing the world's most successful entrepreneurs? And that, that guaranteed, Lauren, the day that I launched my podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, was the best daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. It was the worst daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. It was the only daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. So I was the best solution to a real problem in this world, which for people like myself, by the way, who wanted a podcast waiting for them every morning when they woke up and went for a run, hit the gym, drove to work, did any number of things that they did when they were consuming content. I wanted that show. It didn't exist. I made that show, making me the best in class day one. And so that's the key, niching your flipping face off. So you can start with a big idea. Then you've got to knit your face off within that big idea to avoid to an unserved market within that idea and then that next step after you've done those two things, you have to know who your perfect avatar is, that customer, that client, that listener of your podcast, whatever that might be for you, you have to know that person inside and out. Absolutely. What is one of the biggest ahas or surprises that you've had from all the successful entrepreneurs you've interviewed on your show? That everybody falls flat on their face all the time. I'm not just saying like, oh, that person had one big failure. Every successful entrepreneur that I failed, that I've interviewed has failed over and over and over again because they've understood that failure is the stepping stone to success. And that's the genius. You know, the, the people that can't succeed and they get stuck, like we were talking about at the early part of this episode, those are people that are scared to fail, that are perfectionists. Well, guess what? There's no such thing as perfectionists. A perfectionist is a coward who's hiding behind the word of perfectionism because they don't want to fail. They don't want to try. They don't want to maybe lose. Well, losing's part of the game. Failing's part of the game. The winners know that. Have you ever felt like an imposter interview or intimidated interviewing some of the most successful entrepreneurs on the planet? The first 480 episodes, I felt like an imposter. I remember after getting done one interview, I said, man, I felt good. That was good. I'm not an imposter anymore. And I went and looked and I was like, number 481. All right, let's go. And that was a year and a half of doing a daily show. Wow. What did you do before you built Entrepreneurs on Fire? I was in the army for eight years. I tried corporate finance, commercial real estate. I went to law school. I mean, I was just struggling along like most people in their 20s and 30s. What do you think for you has been one of the biggest influences to get that specific? I mean, you gave us the formula, niche it down, be the best at it. I mean, you're we are talking to thousands of people right now. And as you know, maybe 1% will actually do it. What do you think helped you persevere, helped you decide, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to actually get these entrepreneurs onto my show? Freedom, knowing what my driving force was, knowing that whatever I was doing in law school and corporate finance and commercial real estate and the army was not going to get me my overriding desire of freedom. And a lot of people come to me and they say, John, should everybody be an entrepreneur? Of course not. There should be a ton of people who look in the mirror and say, I'm happy. I'm happy waking up in the morning and doing a nine to five job that I'm needed and I'm adding value to and I've got security and I've got a niche within that that I love. And that's great for you. But I knew that that was the anti of what I wanted. Like I wanted 
that word freedom. I wanted to run my own show to win, to lose on my own merits. That's what I needed. That's what I wanted. I love that. So talk to me about your book. And I love the title as well. What will we find on the website? What are you most excited about that's in the book? Listen, the book is the culmination of the 3,600 interviews that I've now done with the world's most successful entrepreneurs. I took those learnings from every one of those conversations, from every one of those inspiring, successful entrepreneurs, and I pulled out all the commonalities that successful entrepreneurs, that successful business men and women have on their path to success. And I boiled it down into a 17-step process that will guide you to financial freedom and fulfillment. And that's what I realized going through this process was it's not a hidden path. It's not a secret path. It's a very common path to get to your version of uncommon success. So if that's something that you're looking for, financial freedom, fulfillment, this book will take you there in 17, in 17 chapters, 17 steps, you'll be there. I love it. So uncommonsuccessbook.com. Can you start us off? They're going to have to get the book. They're going to have to go to the website. What is step one and two? We talked about it already. The big idea is step one. Like You do have to come up with a big idea. That is key. You have to have a big idea. That's where most people fail. They think their big idea is the idea. No, it's just a big idea. And a million other people have had that big idea too. Now, niche down, which is step two, to avoid to an underserved part of that big idea. And then step three, create your avatar. That's the first three steps. Nobody gets to step two. 5% of people get, ever get to step three. I mean, that's the drop off you have. And that's why people usually, you know, shave their head and say, wow, I thought I had such a good idea. Well, you probably did, but there's 16 steps after that idea to get and accomplish success. So from three to 17, you let's say that the 1%, they do steps one, two, three. Of the rest of the steps, the other 14, which ones do you think people really get stuck on? They get stuck and, and they don't move forward. Creating content, which is step eight, because they start to create content and they have a couple of good podcasts or a couple of good blog posts or a couple of good video shows or a couple of good this or a couple of good that. And then they just stop because they don't have the systems, the tools, the automations in place to keep producing consistent content. I've never been the best podcast host. I've never had the best guests. I've never had the best X, Y, or Z. But every single day, seven days a week, my episodes are going live on Entrepreneurs on Fire. My consistency has won. Nothing else has won, but my consistency has won. And that's where people struggle and they fail. We have a word for it in podcasting. It's called pod fade because everybody does it. Everybody fades. Absolutely. You know, you're one of our 400 episodes, so uh, which is awesome. But that daily, that repetition, we launch twice a week. But really getting to it, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Like you said, you have over 3,000, 3,600 episodes now. And it, episode four something was when you were like, okay, fine. I 400 episodes in, I finally don't feel like an imposter. I finally feel like I can do this. How have you seen this as filtered over into your personal life in terms of perseverance, maybe something with your health or your finances or your relationships? I'd say I'll pick wealth out of, uh, sorry, health out of that. Like health has really been the one factor where I've just applied the same consistency I had to business to my health life. And it's impacted it so much. I mean, are you eating the right things? Are you drinking enough water? Are you exercising every single day? Not one day a week, not twice a week, but are you doing those things every day? And that crossover works. Absolutely. Well, we love to ask a final question and that is what does rise up for you mean to you? Listen, it means look around you, realize that all ships rise in a high tide so be the person that you want to be to inspire others, to motivate others, to, to, to take others with you on this journey. The way that I end my show is you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So we all can rise up together when we're being intentional about it. So that's what that would mean to me. Mm. I love it. John Lee Dumas, thank you so much for being here today. Entrepreneurs on Fire. Check it out today. If you haven't been listening, you're going to get your daily dose of some fire. Thank Thanks, you so Lauren. much for being on today. Awesome. That was fantastic. 
It's been my pleasure to be your host, Lauren Sweeney, of this fantastic episode. I hope it gave you some insight about the grit, the determination, 3,000 episodes. Maybe you're not a podcaster. Perhaps you are building a business or you're an executive for a company or you're a leader climbing the ranks or you're a parent. One inch better than yesterday? What is the next best thing that I can do? If you are looking for a free download, how about our confidence kit? riseupforyou.com slash confidence. It gives you six videos, workbooks filled with information from our CEO, Netta, and myself guaranteed to really give you what you need to take yourself to the next level. I'm Lauren Sweeney. Until our next episode, Rise Up For You.